five of us delighted to be here this evening in Sheffield, where we're going to give the first performance of what has become titled Up By The Roots. Um, this collaboration between the trio, which are Adi, Dara and I, and Pierce Halliwell composer and Sinead Morrissey poet. And I say Up By The Roots, it has become known as, because when this whole project and adventure started, there weren't any words and there weren't any music, there were lots of ideas, so there definitely wasn't a title. And we've spent the last 48 hours working very closely together, uh, but it was the first time that Sinead entered the performance space. We obviously have been working at the music as we've been getting it and, um, you know, doing our best to actually uh, deliver the poetry as well and getting used to the flow of the piece and how we felt it all together. But I think it must be a completely different um, realm of, of uh, uh, how would you describe it, um, connection with the work that you have written to now be here in the middle of the performing group on stage um, performing. It's not just delivering, it's actually performing this whole work. So it would be really nice to hear from you, Sinead, how you found that for the last two days. So it's been really exciting and it's been really exciting to hear the language meshed into the music and to hear how the two are speaking backwards and forwards. Um, and even though I do perform my poetry a lot and I enjoy doing that, um, being part of the music as closely as this is obviously a completely new experience, but it's been great fun and everyone's been so supportive in helping me come in when I need to come in, given that I don't read music. Um, so yeah, it's been terrific. What's this muttering? What's this kerfuffle? Woken up after 500 years. Dragged out of my sleep by pheromones of alarm. By a sharp salt smell. And did you have any uh, any strong idea before of how the music and and your your poetry would work together in terms of flowing together? I mean, it's one thing knowing that these bits of text are going to go in between these phrases of music or these bars of music, but did you have a, a strong sense of what it would be like, or has it actually felt very natural to you? as we've gone through. I had no sense of what it would be like and I've been really surprised by how organic the whole thing feels uh, and how seamlessly those transitions work. Uh, so it's defied my own expectations massively. I'm really delighted with how it all works as one piece. When Pierce and I first discussed the project we were really, both of us were really interested in the ways in which the the piece could change as it progresses um, and how the barriers between music and poetry might break down. So where I didn't have a very clear idea of the characteristics of the music, I did leave deliberate gaps, white spaces, silences, um, particularly in the third piece, the climax of the piece, where I envisage music interrupting the language and vice versa. Um, and hearing that come together for the first time yesterday in rehearsal has been spine, oh. spine tingling actually, it's been Fantastic. brilliant, it, uh, it's been much more successful than I thought it could have been. <laughs> okay. Spectacular trespass, my four gardens lit up like Christmas, the clearing is seething, Shouting, gesticulating. I think, uh, Sinead, your beautiful poems and Pierce's brilliant, um, it's like an imagery of, of the poem, um, as, as we tried it in, in rehearsal just the other day, um, they, they both really come to life together yeah. and support both elements so well um so i was curious how how was the collaboration um for you to um yeah i mean i think they do but i don't really understand how that happened to be honest it just felt completely natural um 
I was thinking about this afterwards, and I was thinking that normally if I'm composing chamber music or anything really in, in the abstract, I have to create the expressive territory. So like, I'm, what am I trying to create? And sometimes I find, for example, that my music has a sort of tendency to start sort of being jolly when I don't really intend it to be, and, and uh, sort of rhythmic things happen. So, so I'm usually worrying about that. I'm kind of, maybe I want it to be jolly, but I'm worrying about the, you know, what kind of expression am I trying to, to make here and controlling that. Whereas in this project, I hardly had to think about that because with Sinead's poetry, I, I was kind of in a zone already, so I knew the poem following or preceding Sinead work first, really, and I found I needed that. I sort of knew what was going before whatever I was writing or what was going after it. And therefore, I kind of was in that world, particularly the, the world of the story of the, these real or imaginary migrants. And I didn't really have to think about that, and that's a very strange thing. You know, it's quite reassuring, really, I'm coming, coming out of it. I think, actually, I always seem to sort of know what kind of mood each of the movements was in, that what, you know, kind of angst or uh, calm, or there's not much calm, you know, it w was involved. And it, somehow the poems gave me a kind of route map for it, which I don't normally have. I mean, it's really interesting. Etruscan games couldn't be uh, a more different piece to this. Mm. And yet, you know, I can say... Um, wholeheartedly, it's definitely by Pierce Hallowell. Mm. They both sound like Pierce Hallowell's music. Well, without giving too much away about this piece tonight, um, but using Sinead's word, very true word, organic. What's most organic is uh, by the last movement of the way it, they they meld together in a very sincere way, and yet suddenly by the last movement of this piece, you're actually nearly a musician on the stage as much as we are nearly actors on the stage. You know, it's nearly like a transversal of roles. It works well, brilliantly. I think the music and the poetry, through that kind of choppy interaction, become transfigured mm -hmm. into this other thing. Yeah. And the subject of the story at that point is transfiguration. Yeah. So there's a lovely mm -hmm. um, kind of mirroring of form and content. Yeah. Yeah. It takes the, off, I think, particularly in the final. Yeah, yeah. The voice, I think, becomes so close at the end to what we're doing as a group that it sounds like it emerges into, into like that a fourth sound. member of the yeah. core test. Yeah. Yeah. It's really remarkably yeah. written. And, yeah. yeah, well, I think we, we took very seriously the Beyond Borders idea of the PRS Music Foundation as a kind of philosophical starting point because uh, people always talk about words of music for composers and singers, and we were in what for us is a new situation with... Uh, music and narration or, or, you know, separate text. And so I think it was very important to us that we started by having them separate and then charted a course of, uh, of interaction so that they came together until you have this kind of operatic situation at the end. Um, and uh, I'm, I'm pleased with that because I think if we just presented a panel or series of panels of words and, and of music and poetry... I think there's something inevitable about that by the end, and people think, you know, how many more poems are there to go, kind of thing. Yeah. And I wanted to present something that had a trajectory, you know, that it developed as you went through. The moon undoes its tethers, rises. I wish them dumb and gone. I watch them become dumb and brown and freaked by their altered shadows, by their headgear. By their delicate, too thin legs, by their fur. And but for the sudden flash of their backs, the sudden rush of their skitter.
quiet here once more. A shuttered shop. A lake with no one on it. And sweet sleep. takes me in its mouth. And let me drop. <laughs>